afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our first quarterly seminar for RentWorks Property Management. And wanted to thank you for joining. And what we're going to be talking about today is maintenance and all the challenges that it incurs. And so Jonathan and I were talking uh, pre-show, like all the maintenance concerns go straight to my beard and they make gray hairs because the maintenance is a challenge. And we wanted to talk about it right away, uh, getting into our first webinar, because I think it's a major thing and we want to go through it because there's a lot of concerns with it and it's just a tough time. So I want to introduce the maintenance team and talk a little bit about them. At least we can understand who they are and what roles they play. This will help our owners understand who we are, what we do. And so kind of down the line, I want to introduce Jonathan Matu. Now, Jonathan is our director of maintenance. His background is he helped start Managers Rekey, which we transitioned into manager services. And he's been with and around the umbrella of RentWorks for four years, Jonathan? Just about, yep. Just about four years. And he's got a real estate license. He has a real estate mind. And he's very sharp at maintenance. He's done maintenance and he's coordinated for maintenance and he's supervised maintenance personnel. So he's done it all. And uh, for a brief time, he worked for a pool company. For a brief time, he worked for, for a locksmith. And so he's the guy that is overseeing the maintenance department right now. And a lot of these responsibilities do fall onto his shoulders. And so what we want to talk about today is his team and then how he's conducting maintenance, some of the challenges uh, some of the metrics, right, that might actually uh, baffle you, and just some of the, the interesting deals that we have to work with on maintaining these homes, because we take this very, very seriously, and I, I don't take this tongue-in-cheek. One of our, our mantras is provide exceptional service, and that's I'm what we do at RentWorks. So, Melanie, I'm going to mute you. Okay, you're now muted, Melanie. Thank you. Um and so in saying that, we understand that at a high level. Here's why. Because we know if we don't conduct maintenance at a high level, the tenants will go knock on the neighbor's door and the neighbor is going to give the tenant the owner's phone number. The tenant's going to call the owner, uh, complain, and the owner's going to call us up and fire us. We get it, okay? That's what happens in the industry with single family homes. Uh, it's just a thing. And they, could, they can stalk the owners if they need to. If a tenant gets seriously upset that they're being ignored, they will stalk the owner. They will find them on Facebook. They'll find the property records. They'll ask the neighbors. Uh, they'll find them somehow. And I don't blame them, but we are the go-between and we take that very seriously. And it starts with good communication, both to the owners and to the tenants. And we don't take that likely. So I want to introduce Jonathan real quick. He didn't think he's going to talk a lot on this particular webinar. Uh, Melanie told him, oh, Brad will do all the talking. He can't shut up. And so that's, that's fine. We can, we can live with that. We can work with that. Right, Jonathan. <laughs> so what we want to do, at least at this point, Jonathan, I want you to talk about the team and the roles. So that way we can hear it directly from you, the supervisor, kind of who you have at your disposal to make sure that we are running maintenance at a high level. So behind you at four o'clock, Mr. Ryan Sanders, uh, he offices right there behind you. He ran out of there at four o'clock. He didn't want to be on yeah. camera. He, he's camera shy. So he ran out of there and I was kind of uh, jabbing him a little bit, but take it from there. Go ahead and introduce your team. Yeah. Um, so Ryan's behind me. He's the make ready manager. He really just makes sure as soon as a tenant leaves, we're getting that home turned around as quick as possible so we can get the new tenant in ready to go, obviously to rent out. Uh, we have Alex and Paul. Um, they're kind of helping and assist with any tenant problems. So the tenants are already there, have been there for a while. They'll go ahead, you know, submit stuff. We have a property mail that we use and anything, floors, damage, piping, you know, plumbing, whatever. They go ahead and fix that for you, make sure it's taken care of. Um, and again, that's Paul and Alex that take care of that. And then we have Monica who's our, in our Austin team, uh, kind of doing the same thing a little bit of Ryan. Um, and then also as Alex and Paul taking care of tenants overall. Um, so that's the, the main four or, or of our team to make sure you're taking care of and your house is taken care of. Yeah, a little bit more on Ryan's role is he's the guy that goes out in the field and supervises the make readies. So he's our quality control guy in the field, making sure the vendors are making the homes ready as soon as possible and making sure the quality is good. And so it's vitally important to have one or potentially two people in the field looking at those. And it's even better if they're the same person, because then they actually get to know what's good, what's not mm -hmm. good. They get to know pricing like the back of their head. Uh, I mean, they, they just back of their hand, not back of their head. Come on, you're supposed to correct me, Jonathan. 
Oh, this is a, this is a fun conversation here. Sounded good. But it's good to have Ryan in the field for sure because he's the guy that knows what's good, what isn't, and he's meticulous. You know, Melanie and he I always detail. pick on him a little bit. He is so detail oriented and so meticulous. He's a tremendous resource that we are lucky enough to have. He's been with us for I'm thinking going on four plus years. Yep. Uh, he's had several different roles with us, but he's just he's just been a doing he's been doing a great job for us. So we really do appreciate him. Now, Alex and Paul, they are tenant and owner facing points of contact. They're the guys that when a tenant wants to call in or contact in. They're organizing those repairs. Alex has been with us for over six years. Now, Paul's fairly new, but Alex is going to make sure he gets trained very quickly. And they're only handling a certain section of our inventory of homes. You know, Paul has a certain half and then uh, Alex has a certain half. So they're not overwhelmed by any means. That way they can kind of handle those directly. Now, here's a fun little crazy stat. We had 900 some closed work orders in the month of June. Right. So they could have been initiated in May or April, depending on what's going on, but 900 plus closed work orders. I mean, that's a lot of work orders that we're tracking and getting executed in one month. And I just want to throw that out there. So um, people understand that, you know, we have a big organization that has huge and tremendous tracking mechanisms. Uh, we use property meld, we use Rentvine, some of the best softwares in the industry, and we're able to conduct maintenance at a very high level. And that's part of it. I just want to illustrate that point that, you know, not a lot of organizations could handle that many work orders in one month. And if you're going to do it, you got to have the right tools in place to do that for sure. So the tools Monica, help, the tools help go, ahead. Big time. <laughs> go ahead, Jonathan. I was just saying the tools help big time. Not only do we use the rent buying and property mail, but even just the stuff that people don't think about, you know, Google sheets or Excel, like just making sure everyone's on the same page. It, it's a lifesaver. It has truly helped. So. Yeah, one of the things I want you to talk about is give me a paraphrase of property meld. Paraphrase. Mm, it's a lot of them. Uh, definitely, it helps organize. Um, very helps organize a lot of stuff. You can create your own projects. Um, useful is, is probably a big just word, I would say. Very, very useful. Um, I don't think I can think of just one phrase, but overall, it's really made our lives tremendously easier right now. So. Yeah, what it typically is doing for us is it helps us coordinate the access between tenants and vendors. Mm -hmm. And so that's huge because obviously a work order, when it comes in, we want to address it. We want to put it in the queue. We want to contact the tenant, acknowledge it. We contact the vendor. Just imagine a work order, right? I'm going to paint the picture for a lot of the owners that may be watching is we get a work order in. Uh, it's not just give it to the vendor and it's done. I mean, we have to coordinate access between the vendor and the tenant and you can imagine voicemails, you can imagine missed calls. We work with text messages as well. We have the vendor take before and after pictures. The vendor can put in an invoice through property meld. So all these things are, are seamlessly happening in the background that help us manage the maintenance. Now we pay for that, right? We have to pay for that maintenance software, but it's well worth it because we are, obviously we wanna do maintenance at a high level. I keep saying that over and over. I'm a broken record on that one because it's, it's one of our mantras. We really have to conduct maintenance at a high level. And so what I want to talk about next is some of the stuff that uh, we'll bring up talking points on our website, on our maintenance tab. Uh, we have several different uh, tabs inside of that one dropdown. And so the first tab is manager services. Now, manager services is a company that is under the RentWorks umbrella. And we have two technicians in San Antonio, one technician in Austin, all driving nice, very well maintained custom vans, right? That are that are that have all the logos on them. And that adds to our professionalism because when they show up, they're wearing shirts that say manager services. They have badges that identify themselves. And so the technicians that we own under our umbrella were able to dispatch into the homes to do inspections, to do light maintenance. Uh, to do move out inspections, to do code, property code stuff, because mm -hmm. that's a big one too. The team want, wanted me to talk about the property codes because that's always a surprise for folks. And so to, to give you kind of a, you know, the higher level two cents worth on the property code is we are bound by Texas law to make sure the home has certain things. That includes smoke detectors. That includes changing the locks. That includes 
peepholes even in the garage door to the garage, right? On every single exterior door. That includes a deadbolt. So a, a on the outside of the door, it's a keyless entry. On the inside is a deadbolt. They call it a keyless deadbolt. And the last part is an arm bar for any sort of sliding door, like a pin and or a bar, both meet property code, where, the, where we really start to um, have misunderstandings with owners is when we have a rollover and or we have a new tenancy, we have to spend the money to bring the home to property code. We don't really, we don't have any choice. We have to put new smoke detectors in if they're less than eight years old. We have to change the locks. We have to put those keyless deadbolts in. We have to put those those door viewers in. That is by law what we have to do. A lot of the experienced owners, you know, listening to this, they're like, yeah, we know, we get it. Because we, we spend a lot of time and effort to communicate that up front because we don't want you to be upset when you see your first invoice and you see what the heck are these big charges for? I don't remember anything about this. Well, all of that has been well-documented as far as when we make a repair, when we do that, it's well documented. And here's the scenario. And I know, you know, you're like, God, shut up. So we can get out of here. Um, the scenario is, let's say a home has some sort of incident. Let's say there's a fire, for example. Well, we have seen attorneys go straight to the property management company and straight to the owner and say, we don't believe you had the proper smoke detectors in the home. Here's your $2 billion lawsuit. All right. Attorneys are like that because they know we carry insurance, they know the homeowners carry insurance, they're gonna come after you if there's a fire. So what we do is we pull up documentation that says, no, no, on 26 July, 2022, which is today, we changed out the locks, we replaced the smoke detectors, we did this, we did that, here's the invoice, here's the proof. That stops any of those attorneys right dead in their tracks from accusing us and or the owner of being outside of property code. That is a real world scenario. Okay, that's not something we're just making up. I've seen it. I've, I've been there where we've had incidents and we've been able to show proof and attorneys, you know, you get it. This is the world we live in. Uh, you know, the Thomas J. Henry's of the world, they love to come after the big, the big management companies. They love to come after the big trucking companies. That's their business model. And we are there to make sure that's prevented. So that's part of what our manager services company does is to ensure that we can control those technicians we're getting quality work done. And when we do outgoing inspections, renewal inspections, we have our own technician who's a professional going into those homes, making the tenant feel good. What does that mean for the owners? It means renewals. It means happy tenants. It means long-term lease agreements. That saves the owner's money in rollover because rollovers kill you. And we don't want rollovers. We are financially not incentivized by a rollover. So I hope people understand that we would rather keep a tenant in the home long-term, let them renew five, six, 10 times, keep them in the home, keep them happy. That produces a great system for everybody wins in that scenario. All right, so that's the manager services in a nutshell. Now, in that same dropdown on our maintenance tab, uh, we have discussions about preferred vendors. So you've heard me say that particular catchphrase, preferred vendors, is somebody we vet that we hire directly and we pay. And so we use third party vendors, but they all have provided us general liability insurance. They have all provided us any sort of proof of trade licensing, like if they're a plumber or an air conditioning folks, and they all uh, agree to our standards for work, meaning they have to take before and after pictures, meaning they have to uh, show up on time. They have to leave the home in good condition. They can't stand tenants up. Uh, I mean, they're going to get paid within 15 days of invoice because a lot of folks think that we're, you know, it's a net 30, but we pay our vendors quickly because we want them happy. Our vendors love working for us because one, we help them dispatch and two, we pay them quickly. And if you're a vendor, uh, if you've ever worked with any sort of other property management company, or if you, you've kind of been in this scenario, if you don't have that in place, a vendor will do the work for you and then show up to your office Friday afternoon expecting to be paid. Uh, so we pay them very quickly. And that way we don't run into that scenario to upset our vendors because on a side tangent, Jonathan, tell me how many air conditioning vendors we have right now. We have nine right now overall. Uh, it's it's good crazy, amount. huh? I mean, even then we're still getting backed up. 
And yeah. so now that you mentioned the air conditioning vendors, let's spend some time talking about some of the challenges right now we're seeing in just air conditioning. So if you are lucky enough to not be in San Antonio in the summer, if you are spending your time uh, in Siberia or wherever it's cooler, it's been triple digits the entire the entire summer. Driving yeah. around today, this is what I heard uh, on, on the radio. They said today may not get to 100, and it's the only day in July that has not touched triple digits. And it might only hit 99 today. Right. It's, 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 a, a, ooh, it's a cool way. Right. But talk us through some of the challenges, Jonathan, of what you're seeing with the air conditioning vendors, just in particular. Um, if we're just looking at H bag vendors, uh, biggest one is the heat is too hot in the house where you have hundreds and hundreds, I would say of work orders. Hey, it's too hot. My AC is not getting high enough theoretically, or in reality, it's so hot outside. It compensates. Um, but trying to reach just to get estimates to every one of those properties. On top of that, we do a lot of preventative maintenance. So most techs, or I would say HVAC techs and vendors don't tend to get to those as quick as possible because theoretically it's little money versus fixing a brand new AC. So that's one of the things they're just getting held up by so many jobs, so many estimates. And then on top of that, they have other companies or other homeowners they try to work for as well. So it's really fighting through and getting people out there as fast as possible. Uh, we do it. It just takes a little more time, but we do get people out there to take care of stuff. What are the challenges in, in getting some of the parts involved? What are you seeing? So, I mean, everyone else knows it. I mean, you try to go to your grocery store, it's hard for, enough to find meat. Um, so everyone has either stocked up or it's not in yet. It's kind of the same thing. You know, you're ordering stuff either overseas or it's not produced. It's back ordered. So now you're waiting instead of for a couple of days for a part. It's a week. It's two weeks. Um, so that's really the big issue for ordering new parts if they don't have any spare on hand or even just extra in the shop. So, Yeah, so there is a quirky little portion of the property code that talks about emergencies with air conditioning. And so that's always been a fine line. The property code is pretty vague about it. It says you have to address an air conditioning repair within 14 days. Uh, clearly, we're never going to wait that long. Sometimes there is a, an actual valid emergency. Well, I, I say emergency, a valid uh, immediate concern would be a better way to put mm -hmm. that because there may be an elderly person in the home. There might be a young baby in the home. Uh, and we try to act as fast as we can. We try to get the vendors out there as fast as we can. And I wanted you to bring that up because of the number of AC vendors that we have, the HVAC vendors, we just don't have one, right? And we just, yeah. we, we wait for them to, to not be busy that, that day and get out there. It is a batting order. Sometimes we'll end up calling four or five vendors to say, hey, can you get out there tomorrow? Hey, can you get out there tomorrow? And mm -hmm. then we communicate that back to the tenant. And of course we have a spending limit that is a concern. And to be completely upfront, sometimes we have to push through that because if we have an air conditioning vendor sitting in the driveway, waiting for permission on a Saturday afternoon to do a repair that's, I don't know, 600 some dollars where their spending limit is 500, for example, uh, we actually did raise that, by the way. So if there is some common sense there, right? We're not going to approve the $6,000 repair, of course, without the owner's explicit approval. But if it's within reason and we make that decision, make that call, we will make that repair on site because the alternative is, well, Mr. Vendor, we couldn't reach the owner to approve your $600 request. Uh, so go away and we'll do our best to get you back out there as soon as possible. That extreme, that just ticks the vendors off so bad because they can't complete a job and they can't get paid. Then they know they have to go back out to the property potentially later on, only slowing up the process, irritating the tenants even further. When tenants get hot, when tenants get super irritated, they stop calling us at a certain point, they start calling attorneys. And then the attorneys send us demand letters. And then they bail out of their lease agreement saying that we're not doing maintenance. So it's extremely important right? You see one effect goes to another. And if you don't do maintenance at, again, a high level, attorneys, tenants get involved, and it's just, it's just a bad situation all around. So we sometimes have to make those tough decisions. And sometimes it's not a fun phone call to an owner. Uh, they can imagine that, hey, Mr. Owner, I hate to have to be the one to tell you this, but we had to make a $600 repair on your property. We're taking this out of your next month's rent. I know it's not a good phone call, but at least the tenant out of their conditioning at least they're happy. And at least, you know, we can, we can try to keep going forward in this lease agreement to where everybody's happy. 
And that, that's a big challenge for us, right? And so I'm glad you brought that up about the vendors. Anything more you want to add upon that? Um, no, I mean, not only just HVAC, I would say just with the issues, it's across the board. I mean, that's cleaning services. That's, I mean, glass is so hard to come by nowadays. I mean, it's it, across the board. It's holding up the process for us doing what we used to do years ago. Um, so, I mean, just keeping that in mind that we're not just sitting here and waiting for anything. It's we're contacting vendor after vendor after vendor to really take care of your property. And that's yeah. number one goal. That's the key. So, no, I think that I think it's dead on sp uh, spot on because we're seeing fewer vendors in the market right now. And it's surprising, right? But we are. Yeah. And it's tougher to find good ones. And then we, when we do find them, they have challenges finding labor as well. And mm -hmm. so you might, you might be engaged with one of our favorite vendors is Liberty Air, for example. And Liberty Air, well, they're having challenges keeping staffing as well because uh, the big, big, big giant companies can pay more and they're snagging staff to their entity and leaving the smaller guys that are a bit more affordable, leaving them kind of high and dry because there's only so many technicians. And again, we talked about the parts issue. Uh, that's beating a dead horse because everybody understands that parts are tougher to get. Uh, if you don't believe me, go try to buy a new car and they're waiting on a chip to be delivered from Timbuktu to complete that car and ship it to you. And so it's just a challenging time. And so we're taking this opportunity to go through it at length to discuss it. And so that our owners can be aware of it. Now, on down the same line on our website, the next tab down is cleaning. And so we do have a cleaning service that I want people to be aware of. And so it's a, a 695 cleaning service. And this is all inclusive for uh, carpet cleaning and deep, deep make ready made service cleaning. And so we provide the service to our tenants, we provide the service to our owners, anybody who needs it, because the one thing we tell you about this is we own the job, right? So for example, I take this scenario, owner moves out of a home, uh, the owner pays for the 695 cleaning, we do the carpet cleaning, we do the deep maid service to the tenant moves in, a tenant's not happy. Well, guess what, Mr. Owner, Mrs. Owner, you're never going to hear about it, because we will fix it, right? We will make it happen, we will fix it, we'll own it, we'll make that tenant happy. That's part of that service is that 695 cleaning. And, you know, sadly, Jonathan, when you started, it was 495. Yeah. Remember that? I do. I mean, <laughs> and, and even then we were cutting it close. Like we were paying out, you know, 450, 475 for that type of a service to the vendors doing it. Um, and it just keeps getting more and more expensive. So it, it's a good point to illustrate that Four or five years ago, it was four ninety five. We had to go to five ninety five, and now it's six ninety five, and we're still barely breaking even on some of those jobs. So uh, that's that's just a, one of our challenges in this industry. And we're not complaining, we're not whining, we're just talking through it. Okay. Yep. Moving on down the line, the maintenance request tab is on that on that particular website. So we're not as stringent as some property management companies on maintenance requests because we will take them over the phone. So the tenants can call in, we will take their verbal maintenance request, we'll put it into the software, right? But some companies or some managers say, we only take requests in writing, do not walk into the office, do not call with a maintenance request, you must go to the website, you must go submit it on a napkin and triplicate, whatever their processes are. Mm -hmm. We're not like that because we want to provide exceptional service. And that's both to the tenants and to the owners and the way to do that with the tenants is make sure that you can take their maintenance request over the phone as needed. Now, clearly they can, it's a, it's a better process for them, honestly, if they go and do it online. And so uh, I think that's a better right. thing for them to do because it, it goes right into the system. We can address it uh, a little bit quicker. And then of course we have a date time stamp, et cetera, et cetera. So having said that about the maintenance request, we talked about the preferred vendors, on our website, in addition, we have a move out checklist. And so that's also good for the owners and or the tenants. So they can go in there, grab that checklist and understand exactly what they're supposed to do on move out. So one little interesting twist that we put into our agreements a long time ago is we do not want the tenants to paint. We do not want the tenants to clean carpets. And we kind of discourage them from any sort of maid service cleaning. We ask them to leave it broom clean which means take out all your stuff, okay? Uh, possibly best scenario is for them to pay us to do the carpet cleaning because carpet cleaning, for example, in itself, 
uh, some management companies, some people, you know, in this scenario say clean the carpets, period. All right. Clean the carpets, period. All right. What does that mean? I take that as me renting a rug doctor at HEB for $69 for two days. And I'm going to, I'm going to wipe the carpets with the rug doctor. So I leaves, it leaves track marks. Right. And so they give you a receipt for the rug doctor from HEB says, no, I clean the carpets. I cleaned it. And you're sitting there like, okay, you did clean the carpets, but I walk in there and they're absolutely disgusting. Uh, so no, you didn't really clean the carpets. And we end up having to charge a tenant and they get super ticked off, right? Um, so we just ask the tenants, don't clean the carpets, don't try to paint because we've had tenants paint and it looks like the home has measles, right? You walk in, you look at the walls and there's like splotches everywhere because they're using the paint that sat in the garage for three years that does not match the paint on the wall. And the only way to do that is to blend it. And typically you want professional painters to do that because they know how to blend the paint to make an entire wall look like it's supposed to look. And so just a couple of things in the, in our experience of managing homes and how we've gotten to this point. Uh, anything you want to add on that, Jay Money? No, you hit it very well. The biggest thing, the best example is the carpet cleaning. You know, tenants will tend to do stuff. And I mean, you theoretically have a lifespan of the carpet, right? And maybe they're getting toward the end or a tenant been there for six years and it's stained like crazy. And well, no, best to leave that alone. Maybe instead of you spending the $70 for the doctor, the rug doctor, it might be time to replace the carpet overall. And now you wasted your money. So yeah, uh, you hit it pretty much good. It's a great example. So you, you touched on something too, the, the lifespan of the carpet. So according to the IRS, the most favorite organization of our, of our fantastic government, the IRS, they say carpets have a lifespan of seven years. And so the way we work our security deposit itemizations and or move out final lease end procedures is if a tenant, basically if they deprive the owner, you, of mm -hmm. two years of carpets because they completely destroyed them and the carpets were five years old, they deprived you of two years use of those carpets we prorate two sevenths of that particular carpet replacement and charge the tenant. That way we can stand in front of a judge the next day and say, judge, this is exactly what we did with our security deposit, security deposit itemization and or end of lease balance that we charge to the tenant. This is exactly how we did it. Here's the formula and we can justify it. So that depreciation is straight from the IRS. Now, Anytime there's a carpet replacement, we always recommend for a more durable surface. So what are you seeing out there right now that's working pretty well for a lot of owners? Um, so far, I think a lot of it is the type of tenants to get in and understanding, you know, people that have a ton of family in there, obviously carpet's going to go down a little quicker, uh, but also just taking care of the carpet itself. There's a spill cleaned up and all, but using the proper company i would say proper company but a great company that knows what they're doing with carpets and that's why we you know pre-authorize and go through this whole scale that we get great vendors so really just following order following the process that we have and finding that great vendor to have a great carpet in there is going to last a little longer i mean irs is irs will do and say what they need to but if we have a great carpet in there that might last a little longer it'll stretch you know your wallet a little better yeah, one of the things we always get, one of the questions is, should I put some sort of laminate surface in the home? Mm -hmm. And so that that's probably a, a discussion you may have had with several owners. And it really kind of depends. I know that's a squishy, horrible answer, but it depends. I mean, obviously laminate is going to last longer. If you can get it, I would say get it and put it into the home. Tenants tend to love laminate more. It's more pet resistant, more animal resistant, because sometimes you just can't say no to an animal right? With, a, with a, a service animal and or something along those lines, owners, you're not allowed to say no. So if somebody comes in with a seeing eye dog or a PTSD dog and they're veterans, I mean, you can't say no, it's against the law. So sometimes it's better off to put in some of those laminate type floorings, a durable floor tile sometimes in certain areas mm -hmm. versus carpet. And those are things that, you know, we can guide you through as your property manager, you can call in and or, or write in and say, hey, what do you think? Get me an estimate for laminate, get me an estimate for carpet, and then you can make a decision. And it's, uh, you know, sometimes it can be, I don't know, for fun, let's say replacement carpet could be 1500 bucks for whatever square feet. And a laminate could be $2,500. 
So it's a tough one, right? I mean, sometimes yep. you're like, well, I don't know if I want to put that in there and spend that much money uh, if tenants are going to destroy it. However, the life of that laminate may be double, maybe sometimes triple what it would be with the carpet. So it's a tough decision on that. I know this is not meant to be a webinar on flooring, uh, but you know, we, uh, we do like to illustrate some of those points that will help people make those decisions later on. And so one of the last things I want to talk about too is uh, on our webpage, we have a utility concierge service. And so when our new tenants and our outgoing tenants are getting ready to move in and or vacate one of our homes, we have a, th a service that can contact them and offer them ease of function and turning on their utilities. They offer them different services such as uh, wireless internet, security systems, uh, even health share ins insurance. And so that's part of the resident benefits package that we offer. Now, the resident benefits package is a unique system because we mandate that the tenants have insurance and the insurance is a master policy that goes straight under RentWorks. And so the old days, let me talk through this with you guys, just on the master level renters insurance is the old days, when you'd sign a lease agreement, you have to walk into your property manager and show them your tenant insurance. Like, here is my insurance. RentWorks is named additionally insured. They walk out the door, they call their insurance agents and they cancel it as soon as they get their keys. So that's what used to happen in the old days. Now it's the opposite. So RentWorks has the insurance and we just name our tenants additionally insured as part of their automatic resident benefits package. This way the tenant has insurance and the owner benefits from that because of that level of insurance. So this is not meant to be an insurance discussion, gang. I apologize for going down that tangent, but I just wanted to bring it up is one of the benefits that ties into maintenance is that master level insurance for our residents. It's good stuff. So I want to bring up maybe a couple more things uh, our make ready average, right? So this is fun because Ryan and I, and you and I were talking about this pre-show is the average make ready turn is doing around roughly two to three weeks. We could call it 14 days to 21 days on average because it's so tough to get the vendors to do what they're supposed to be doing. Now, prior years, you and I were talking about this again, two years ago, it was easier. I mean, make readies were happening in 10 days, 14 days. The vendors were hungry. There were 20 vendors for every home. Now it's tougher. The parts are tougher. The, the labor's tougher. The price is tougher. And so why we have a full-time Ryan is so somebody is paying attention to that all day, every day to make sure the vendors are doing what they're supposed to be doing on the make readies. And so the stats of that are obviously worse than they were a couple of years ago. We just hope it's going to get better. Obviously, the cost of the make readies is worse because of inflation. Uh, we talked about flooring. We talked about painting. I mean, all those things are just getting a little bit difficult to, to get done. One of the last things we want to talk about is the bidding process. So we get owners that want two or three bids for certain jobs. Now, we understand that. And the challenge is, one, getting a second or even a third bid. Third bid's even tougher. But getting a second bid because a lot of vendors – don't want to drive X, Y, and Z 20, 30, 40 minutes away to stop at a home, check it out, write up a bid, and then they get blown off. Like that's the worst thing for a vendor, right? So what we're able to do, because we have full-time make ready professionals, that are looking at make ready estimates all the time. They're using their eyeballs and they're using their brain to say, yes, this estimate for carpet replacement makes total sense. It's within realm. It's not worth trying to wait a week to get another vendor out there to give you the same bid for the same realm of carpet replacement. And that's just one example. And it, it could be a major make ready, uh, you know, that could, that could run thousands, you know, we're talking paint, carpet repairs, etc. cetera. Uh, if it gets any bigger than that, you're talking kitchen replacements, bathroom replacements. Obviously that's another animal. That's a, that's a completely outside of typically what we do because what we do is, your usual make readies, right? Your usual owner moves out, tenant moves out. Okay, we go in there, we make some repairs, we do some carpet, we do some flooring, we do some cleaning, and we get it ready to go back on the market. Uh, it's, it's not really within our realm to do a $50,000 kitchen replacement, okay? We can do that, but I don't think the owners really want us to do that. They probably want to take charge of that themselves. And if it's a brand new investment property where an investor buys it and it's a dump, 
well, they're going to hire a general contractor anyway to make that ready. So it's typically not going to be us. And that's, that's kind of how we understand our role. So having said quite a bit, I'm going to open it up to Melanie and or Jonathan for any final comments or anything that we should touch on before we say good enough. Um, the only thing I have uh, just to touch base on it, you know, trying to get the bids in, you know, that first bid, we kind of have it down to a science of what's in the realm, what makes sense, because we will definitely have obviously a couple vendors that can kind of do the same thing. We'll get a vendor in that say, keep it on the carpets, you know, they clean the carpets for this amount, have another one come in and they're like, oh, we can do it for this amount, it might be cheaper. But if it's two or $3, but we can get it done now versus we get it done next week, that's a big difference, a big thing. And I think time is key, just making that placement. Now we will, like I said, we have our formula in our head. If we notice a vendor comes in and it is just super high for no reason, we will put that bid out there for the next one. We might say, vendor, don't do this carpet cleaning, do X, Y, Z. Another one comes in, it's cheaper. We're going to take that. We're always looking out what's best for the owners, for what, what should happen. But we're not just, we can't do it all the time. We know it's going to be basically the same across the board. So. No, I appreciate that. So this is going to be a series of uh, quarterly webinars that we plan on conducting. Uh, each time we're going to have a certain different topic. Each time we may have a guest on there. Uh, we want to talk through some of the property management challenges from top to bottom. We could have lenders on here. We can have uh, different different particular people talking about evictions on here. I mean, our, our task in these webinars is to inform the owners of what's going on in the market, what's going on with property management as a whole. And that's really our mandate and what we're doing with these webinars. So uh, without further ado, I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk at this point. I want to thank all of you for watching these webinars. And this is our first of many. We plan on doing this every quarter with certain updates and certain discussion points. If you have any questions, feel free to reach and reach out to us or discuss this with your property management, uh, excuse me, your property manager. You can send them questions and we can add those to the list of what we may want to talk about on the next webinar. So our next one's going to be on our website. Uh, that's going to be in a few months. We'll be able to jump back on again to talk further about what's going on in the property management world with RentWorks. In the meantime, I appreciate you watching and wish all of you the best and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.